The Ustasha – Croatian Revolutionary Movement Croatian, Ustasa, Hrvatski Revolutionarni Pokret, commonly known as Ustasi pronounced Uste, Croatian, Ustas, was a Croatian fascist, racist, ultranationalist and terrorist organization, active, in its original form, between 1929 and 1945. Its members murdered hundreds of thousands of Serbs, Jews, and Roma as well as political dissidents in Yugoslavia during World War II. The ideology of the movement was a blend of fascism, Roman Catholicism and Croatian nationalism. The Ustase supported the creation of a greater Croatia that would span the Dina River and extend to the border of Belgrade. The movement emphasized the need for a racially pure Croatia and promoted genocide against Serbs, Jews and Romani people, and persecution of anti-fascist or dissident Croats and Bosniaks. The Ustase viewed the Bosniaks as ''Muslim Croats'', and as a result, Bosniaks were not persecuted on the basis of race. Fiercely Roman Catholic, the Ustasi espoused Roman Catholicism and Islam as the religions of the Croats and Bosniaks and condemned Orthodox Christianity, which was the main religion of the Serbs. Roman Catholicism was identified with Croatian nationalism, while Islam, which had a large following in Bosnia and Herzegovina, was praised by the Ustase as the religion that keeps true the blood of Croats. When it was founded in 1930, it was a nationalist organization that sought to create an independent Croatian state. When the Ustase came to power in the NDH, a quasi-protectorate established by fascist Italy and Nazi Germany during World War II, its military wings became the Army of the Independent State of Croatia and the Ustase Militia Croatian, Ustaska Vojnica. However the Ustasi never received massive support, the movement functioned as a terrorist organization before World War II but in April 1941, they were appointed to rule a part of Axis-occupied Yugoslavia as the Independent State of Croatia NDH, which has been described as both an Italian-German quasi-protectorate, and as a puppet state of Nazi Germany. Name The word ustasa plural, ustase, is derived from the intransitive verb ustati Croatian for rise up. Pucky ustasa, German, Landsturm, was a military rank in the Imperial Croatian Home Guard 1868-1918. The same term was the name of Croatian third-class infantry regiments German, Landsturm regiments during World War I 1914-1918. Another variation of the word ustati is ustanic plural, ustanici, which means an insurgent, or a rebel. The name ustasa did not have fascist connotations during their early years in the Kingdom of Yugoslavia as the term ustat was itself used in Herzegovina to denote the insurgents from the Herzegovinian Rebellion of 1875. The full original name of the organization appeared in April 1931 as the Ustasa, Hrvatska Revolutionarna Organizacija or UHRO Ustasha, Croatian Revolutionary Organization. In 1933 it was renamed the Ustasa, Hrvatski Revolutionarni Pokret Ustasha, Croatian Revolutionary Movement, a name it kept until World War II. In English, Ustasha, Ustashi, Ustashas and Ustashi are used for the movement or its members. Ideology Ideological roots One of the major ideological influences on the Croatian nationalism of the Ustase was 19th-century Croatian activist Ante Starcevic, an advocate of Croatian unity and independence, who was both anti-Habsburg and anti-Serbian in outlook. He envisioned the creation of a greater Croatia that would include territories inhabited by Bosniaks, Serbs, and Slovenes, considering Bosniaks and Serbs to be Croats who had been converted to Islam and Orthodox Christianity, while considering the Slovenes to be mountain Croats. Starcevic argued that the large Serb presence in territories claimed by a greater Croatia was the result of recent settlement, encouraged by Habsburg rulers, and the influx of groups like Vlachs who took up Orthodox Christianity and identified themselves as Serbs. Starcevic admired Bosniaks because in his view they were Croats who had adopted Islam in order to preserve the economic and political autonomy of Bosnia and Croatia under the rule of the Ottoman Empire. The Ustase used Starcevic's theories to promote the annexation of Bosnia and Herzegovina to Croatia and recognized Croatia as having two major ethnocultural components, Catholics and Muslims. 
The Eustace sought to represent Starchevich as being connected to their views. The Eustace promoted the theories of Dr. Milan Soufflé, who is believed to have claimed that Croatia had been one of the strongest ramparts of Western civilization for many centuries, which he claimed had been lost through its union with Serbia when the nation of Yugoslavia was formed in 1918. Soufflé was killed in Zagreb in 1931 by government supporters. The Eustace accepted the 1935 thesis by a Franciscan friar, Father Kronislav Draganovic, who claimed that many Catholics in southern Herzegovina had been converted to Orthodox Christianity in the 16th and 17th centuries, in order to justify a policy of forcible conversion of Orthodox Christians in the area to Catholicism. The Eustace were heavily influenced by Nazism and Fascism. Pavelic's position of Poglavnik was based on the similar positions of Duce held by Benito Mussolini and Führer held by Adolf Hitler. The Eustace, like fascists, promoted a corporatist economy. Pavelic and the Eustace were allowed sanctuary in Italy by Mussolini after being exiled from Yugoslavia. Pavelic had been in negotiations with fascist Italy since 1927 that included advocating a territory for sovereignty swap in which he would tolerate Italy annexing its claimed territory in Dalmatia in exchange for Italy supporting the sovereignty of an independent Croatia. Mussolini's support of the Eustace was based on pragmatic considerations, such as maximizing Italian influence in the Balkans. After 1937, with the weakening of French influence in Europe following Germany's remilitarization of the Rhineland and with the rise of a quasi-fascist government in Yugoslavia under Milan Stojadinovic, Mussolini abandoned support for the Eustace from 1937–39 to and sought to improve relations with Yugoslavia, fearing that continued hostility towards Yugoslavia would result in Yugoslavia entering Germany's sphere of influence. The collapse of the quasi-fascist Stojadinovic regime resulted in Italy restoring its support for the Eustace, whose aim was to create an independent Croatia in personal union with Italy. However, distrust of the Eustace grew. Mussolini's son-in-law and Italian foreign minister Count Galeazzo Ciano noted in his diary that, "...the Duce is indignant with Pavelic, because he claims that the Croats are descendants of the Goths. This will have the effect of bringing them into the German orbit." Nazi Germany initially didn't support an independent Croatia, nor did it support the Eustace, with Hitler stressing the importance of a strong and united Yugoslavia. Nazi officials, including Hermann Göring, wanted Yugoslavia stable and officially neutral during the war so Germany could continue to securely gain Yugoslavia's raw material exports. The Nazis grew aggravated with the Eustace, among them Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler, who was dissatisfied with the lack of full compliance by the NDH to the Nazis' agenda of extermination of the Jews, as the Eustace permitted Jews who converted to Catholicism to be recognized as honorary Croats, thus putatively exempt from persecution. <laughs> Political program and main agendas In 1932, an editorial in the first issue of the Eustace newspaper, signed by the Eustace leader Ante Pavelic, proclaimed that violence and terror would be the main means for the Eustace to attain their goals, the knife, revolver, machine gun and time bomb, these are the idols, these are bells that will announce the dawning and the resurrection of the independent state of Croatia. In 1933, the Eustace presented, the 17 principles, that formed the official ideology of the movement. The principles stated the uniqueness of the Croatian nation, promoted collective rights over individual rights and declared that people who were not Croat by blood would be excluded from political life. Those considered undesirables were subjected to mass murder. These principles called for the creation of a new economic system that would be neither capitalist nor communist and which emphasized the importance of the Roman Catholic Church and the patriarchal family as means to maintain social order and morality. The name given by modern historian to this particular aspect of Eustace ideology varies. National Catholicism, Political Catholicism, and Catholic Croatianism have been proposed among others. In power, the Eustace banned contraception and tightened laws against blasphemy. The Eustace accepted that Croats are part of the Dinaric race, but rejected the idea that Croats are primarily Slavic, claiming they are primarily descended from Germanic roots with the Goths. The Eustace believed that a government must naturally be strong and authoritarian. The movement opposed parliamentary democracy for being corrupt, and Marxism and Bolshevism for interfering in family life and the economy and for their materialism. 
The Eustace considered competing political parties and elected parliaments to be harmful to its own interests. The Eustace recognized both Roman Catholicism and Islam as national religions of the Croatian people but initially rejected Orthodox Christianity as being incompatible with their objectives. Although the Eustace emphasized religious themes, it stressed that duty to the nation took precedence over religious custom. In power, the Eustace banned the use of the term Serbian Orthodox faith, requiring Greek Eastern faith in its place. The Eustace forcefully converted many Orthodox to Catholicism, murdered and expelled 85% of Orthodox priests, and plundered and burnt many Orthodox Christian churches. The Eustace also persecuted old Catholics who did not recognize papal infallibility. On 2 July 1942 the Croatian Orthodox Church was founded, as a further means to destroy the Serbian Orthodox Church, but this new church gained very few followers. While initial focus was against Serbs, as the Eustace grew closer to the Nazis they adopted antisemitism. In 1936, in The Croat Question, Ante Pavelic placed Jews third among the enemies of the Croats after Serbs and Freemasons, but before Communists, writing, Today, practically all finance and nearly all commerce in Croatia is in Jewish hands. This became possible only through the support of the state, which thereby seeks, on one hand, to strengthen the pro-Serbian Jews, and on the other, to weaken Croat national strength. The Jews celebrated the establishment of the so-called Yugoslav state with great joy, because a national Croatia could never be as useful to them as a multinational Yugoslavia, for in national chaos lies the power of the Jews. In fact, as the Jews had foreseen, Yugoslavia became, in consequence of the corruption of official life in Serbia, a true Eldorado of Jewry. Once in power, the Eustace immediately introduced a series of Nazi-style racial laws, sent most Jews to Eustace and Nazi concentration camps, including the notorious, Eustace Run, Jasonovic, where all told nearly, 32.000, or 80% of the Jews in the independent state of Croatia, were exterminated. The Eustace attached conditions to the Croatian citizenship of Muslims, such as asserting that a Muslim who supported Yugoslavia would not be considered a Croat nor a citizen but would instead be considered considered a Muslim Serb who could be denied property and imprisoned. The Eustace claimed that such Muslim Serbs had to earn Croat status. The Eustace persecuted Jews who practiced Judaism but authorized Jewish converts to Catholicism to be recognized as Croatian citizens and be given honorary Aryan citizenship that allowed them to be reinstated at the jobs from which they had previously been separated. After they stripped Jews of their citizenship rights, the Eustace allowed some to apply for Aryan rights via bribes and or through connections to prominent Eustace. The whole process was highly arbitrary. Only 2% of Zagreb's Jews were granted Aryan rights, for example. Also, Aryan rights did not guarantee permanent protection from being sent to concentration camps or other persecution. Economically, the Eustace supported the creation of a corporatist economy. The movement believed that natural rights existed to private property and ownership over small-scale means of production free from state control. Armed struggle, revenge and terrorism were glorified by the Eustace. The Eustace introduced widespread measures, to which many Croats themselves fell victim. Jozo Tomasevich in his book War and Revolution in Yugoslavia, 1941-1945, states that Never before in history had Croats been exposed to such legalized administrative, police and judicial brutality and abuse as during the Ustasha regime. Decrees enacted by the regime formed the basis that allowed it to get rid of all unwanted employees in state and local government and in state enterprises, the unwanted being all Jews, Serbs and Yugoslav-oriented Croats who were all thrown out except for some deemed specifically needed by the government. This would leave a multitude of jobs to be filled by Ustashas and pro-Ustasha adherents, and would lead to government jobs being filled by people with no professional qualifications. History Before World War II In October 1928, after the assassination of leading Croatian politician Stjepan Radic, Croatian Peasant Party president in the Yugoslav Assembly by radical Montenegrin politician Punisa Rasic, a youth group named the Croat Youth Movement was founded by Bronimir Jelic at the University of Zagreb. 
A year later Ante Pavelic was invited by the 21-year-old Jelic into the organization as a junior member. A related movement, the Domobransky Pokret, which had been the name of the legal Croatian army in Austria-Hungary, began publication of Hrvatski Domobran, a newspaper dedicated to Croatian national matters. The Ustas sent Hrvatski Domobran to the United States to garner support for them from Croatian Americans. The organization around the Domobran tried to engage with and radicalize moderate Croats, using Radic's assassination to stir up emotions within the divided country. By 1929 two divergent Croatian political streams had formed, those who supported Pavelic's view that only violence could secure Croatia's national interests, and the Croatian Peasant Party, led then by Vladko Masic, successor to Stjepan Radic, which had much greater support among Croats. Various members of the Croatian Party of Rights contributed to the writing of the Domobran, until around Christmas 1928 when the newspaper was banned by authorities of the Kingdom of Serbs, Croats and Slovenes. In January 1929 the king banned all national parties, and the radical wing of the Party of Rights was exiled, including Pavelic, Jelic and Gustav Persets. This group was later joined by several other Croatian exiles. On 20 April 1929 Pavelic and others co-signed a declaration in Sofia, Bulgaria, with members of the Macedonian National Committee, asserting that they would pursue their legal activities for the establishment of human and national rights, political freedom and complete independence for both Croatia and Macedonia." The Court for the Preservation of the State in Belgrade sentenced Pavelic and Persets to death on 17 July 1929. The exiles started organizing support for their cause among the Croatian diaspora in Europe, as well as North and South America. In January 1932 they named their revolutionary organization, Eustasa. The Eustasi carried out terrorist acts, to cause as much damage as possible to Yugoslavia. From their training camps in fascist Italy and Hungary, they planted time bombs on international trains bound for Yugoslavia, causing deaths and material damage. In November 1932 ten Eustace, led by Andrija Artukovic and supported by four local sympathizers, attacked a gendarme outpost at Bruzani in the Lika, Velbit area, in an apparent attempt to intimidate the Yugoslav authorities. The incident has sometimes been termed the Velbit Uprising. <laughs> <laughs> Assassination of King Alexander I The Eustachy's most famous terrorist act was carried out on 9 October 1934, when working with the Internal Macedonian Revolutionary Organization they assassinated King Alexander I of Yugoslavia. The perpetrator, a Bulgarian mercenary, Vlado Chernozemsky, was killed by French police. Three Eustachy members who had been waiting at different locations for the king, Miho Kralj, Zvonimir Popisil and Milan Radjic were captured and sentenced to life imprisonment by a French court. Ante Pavelic, along with Eugen Kvaternik and Ivan Persevic, were subsequently sentenced to death in absentia by a French court, as the real organizers of the deed. The Eustace believed that the assassination of King Alexander had effectively broken the backbone of Yugoslavia, and that it was their most important achievement. Soon after the assassination, all organizations related to the Eustace as well as the Hrvatski Domobran, which continued as a civil organization, were banned throughout Europe. Under pressure from France, the Italian police arrested Pavelic and several Eustace emigrants in October 1934. Pavelic was imprisoned in Turin and released in March 1936. After he met with Eugen Dido Kvaternik, he stated that assassination was the only language Serbs understand. While in prison, Pavelic was informed of the 1935 election in Yugoslavia, when the coalition led by Croat Vladko Masic won. He stated that his victory was aided by the activity of Eustace. By the mid-1930s, graffiti with the initials ZEP meaning, Long live Ante Pavelic, Croatian, Zivio Ante Pavelic had begun to appear on the streets of Zagreb. During the 1930s, a split developed between the home Eustachy members who stayed behind in Croatia and Bosnia to struggle against Yugoslavia and the emigre Eustachy who went abroad. The emigre Eustachy who had a much lower educational level were viewed as violent, ignorant and fanatical by the home Eustachy while the home Eustachy were dismissed as soft by the emigres who saw themselves as a warrior elite.
After March 1937, when Italy and Yugoslavia signed a pact of friendship, Eustace and their activities were banned, which attracted the attention of young Croats, especially university students, who would become sympathizers or members. In 1936, the Yugoslav government offered amnesty to those Eustace abroad provided they promised to renounce violence. Many of the emigres accepted the amnesty and returned home to continue the struggle. In the late 1930s, the Ustashi started to infiltrate the para-military organizations of the Croat Peasant Party, the Croatian Defense Force and the Peasant Civil Party. At the University of Zagreb, an Ustashi-linked student group became the largest single student group by 1939. In February 1939 two returnees from detention, Mile Budak and Ivan Orsanik, became editors of Hrvatski Narod, known in English as the Croatian Nation, a pro ustase journal. I. Topic. World War II The Axis powers invaded Yugoslavia on 6 April 1941. Vladko Masic, the leader of the Croatian Peasant Party HSS, which was the most influential party in Croatia at the time, rejected German offers to lead the new government. On 10 April the most senior home-based Ustashi, Slavko Kvaternik, took control of the police in Zagreb and in a radio broadcast that day proclaimed the formation of the independent state of Croatia Nezavisna Drzava Hrvatska, NDH. The name of the state was an attempt to capitalize on the Croat struggle for independence. Masic issued a statement that day, calling on all Croatians to cooperate with the new authorities. Meanwhile Pavelic and several hundred Eustace left their camps in Italy for Zagreb, where he declared a new government on 16 April 1941. He accorded himself the title of Poglavnik, a Croatian approximation to Führer. The independent state of Croatia was declared on Croatian ethnic and historical territory. What is today Republic of Croatia without Istria, Bosnia and Herzegovina, Sirmia and the Bay of Kotor. However, a few days after the Declaration of Independence, the Eustace were forced to sign the Treaty of Rome where they surrendered part of Dalmatia and Krk, Rab, Korčula, Biograd, Šibenik, Split, Chovo, Solta, Mljet and part of Kanavla and the Bay of Kotor to Italy. De facto control over this territory varied for the majority of the war, as the partisans grew more successful, while the Germans and Italians increasingly exercised direct control over areas of interest. The Germans and Italians split the NDH into two zones of influence, one in the southwest controlled by the Italians and the other in the northeast controlled by the Germans. As a result, the NDH has been described as an Italian-German quasi-protectorate. In September 1943, after Italian capitulation, the NDH annexed the whole territory which was annexed by Italy according to Treaty of Rome. Eustace Militia The army of the independent state of Croatia was composed of enlistees who did not participate in Eustace activities. The Eustace Militia was organized in 1941 into five later 15 700-man battalions, two railway security battalions and the elite Black Legion and Poglavnik Bodyguard Battalion later brigade. .On 27 April 1941 a newly formed unit of the Eustace Army killed members of the largely Serbian community of Gudovac, near Bjelovar. Eventually all who opposed and or threatened the Eustace were outlawed. The HSS was banned on of June 1941, in an attempt by the Eustace to take their place as the primary representative of the Croatian peasantry. Vladko Masic was sent to the Jasonovic concentration camp, but later released to serve a house arrest sentence due to his popularity among the people. Masic was later again called upon by foreigners to take a stand and oppose the Pavelic government, but refused. In early 1941 Jews and Serbs were ordered to leave certain areas of Zagreb. Pavelic first met with Adolf Hitler on 6 June 1941. Mile Budak, then a minister in Pavelic's government, publicly proclaimed the violent racial policy of the state on the 22nd of July 1941. Vekoslav Mox Luburic, a chief of the secret police, started building concentration camps in the summer of the same year. Eustace activities in villages across the Dinaric Alps led the Italians and the Germans to express their disquiet. 
According to writer, historian Serja Trifkovich, as early as 10 July 1941 Wehrmacht General Edmund Gles von Horstenau reported the following to the German High Command, the Oberkommando der Wehrmacht OKW, our troops have to be mute witnesses of such events, it does not reflect well on their otherwise high reputation. I am frequently told that German occupation troops would finally have to intervene against Eustace crimes. This may happen eventually. Right now, with the available forces, I could not ask for such action. Ad hoc intervention in individual cases could make the German army look responsible for countless crimes which it could not prevent in the past. Historian Jonathan Staberg describes Eustachy crimes against Serbian and Jewish civilians. Serbian and Jewish man sick woman sick and children were literally hacked to death. Reflecting on the photos of Eustachy crimes taken by Italians, Steinberg writes. There are photographs of Serbian woman sick with breasts hacked off by kitchen knives, man sick with eyes gouged out, emasculated and mutilated. A Gestapo report to Reichsfuhrer SS Heinrich Himmler, dated the 17th of February 1942, stated increased activity of the bands of rebels is chiefly due to atrocities carried out by Eustace units in Croatia against the Orthodox population. The Eustace committed their deeds in a bestial manner not only against males of conscript age, but especially against helpless old people, women and children. The number of the Orthodox that the Croats have massacred and sadistically tortured to death is about 300,000. In September 1942 an Eustace defensive brigade was formed, and during 1943 the Eustace battalions were reorganized into eight four battalion brigades 1st to 8th. In 1943 the Germans suffered major losses on the Eastern Front and the Italians signed an armistice with the Allies, leaving behind significant caches of arms which the partisans would use. By 1944 Pavelic was almost totally reliant on Eustace units, now 100,000 strong, formed in brigades 1-20, recruit training brigades 21-24, three divisions, two railway brigades, one defensive brigade and the new mobile brigade. In November 1944 the army was effectively put under Eustace control when the armed forces of the independent state of Croatia were combined with the units of the Eustace to form 18 divisions, comprising 13 infantry, two mountain and two assault divisions and one replacement division, each with its own organic artillery and other support units. There were several armoured units, fighting continued for a short while after the formal surrender of German Army Group E on 9 May 1945, as Pavelic ordered the NDH forces to attempt to escape to Austria, together with a large number of civilians. The Battle of Poliana, between a mixed German and Eustace column and a partisan force, was the last battle of World War II on European soil. Most of those fleeing, including both Eustace and civilians, were handed over to the partisans at Bleiburg and elsewhere on the Austrian border. Pavelic hid in Austria and Rome, with the help of Catholic clergy, later fleeing to Argentina. After the war After World War II, many of the Eustace went underground or fled to countries such as Canada, Australia, Germany and some countries in South America, notably Argentina, with the assistance of Roman Catholic churches and their own grassroots supporters. For several years some Eustace tried to organize a resistance group called the Crusaders, but their efforts were largely foiled by the Yugoslav authorities. With the defeat of the independent state of Croatia, the active movement went dormant. Infighting fragmented the surviving Eustace. Pavelic formed the Croatian Liberation Movement, which drew in several of the former state's leaders. Vekoslav Vrancic founded a reformed Croatian Liberation Movement and was its leader. Mox Luburic formed the Croatian National Resistance. Blagoj Jovovic, a Montenegrin, shot Pavelic near Buenos Aires on 9 April 1957. Pavelic later died of his injuries. Ethnic and religious persecution The Eustachy intended to create an ethnically pure Croatia, and they viewed those Serbs then living in Croatia, Bosnia and Herzegovina as the biggest obstacle to this goal. Eustace ministers Mile Budak, Mirko Puk and Milovan Zanik declared in May 1941 that the goal of the new Eustace policy was an ethnically pure Croatia. The strategy to achieve their goal was one third of the Serbs were to be killed. One third of the Serbs were to be expelled. 
One third of the Serbs were to be forcibly converted to Catholicism. The NDH government cooperated with Nazi Germany in the Holocaust and exercised their own version of the genocide against Serbs, Jews, and Roma, aka Gypsies, inside its borders. State policy towards Serbs had first been declared in the words of Milovan Zanik, a minister of the NDH Legislative Council, on the 2nd of May 1941. This country can only be a Croatian country, and there is no method we would hesitate to use in order to make it truly Croatian and cleanse it of Serbs, who have for centuries endangered us and who will endanger us again if they are given the opportunity. The Eustace enacted race laws patterned after those of the Third Reich, which persecuted Jews, Romani and Serbs, who were collectively declared to be enemies of the Croatian people. Serbs, Jews, Roma and Croatian and Bosniak dissidents, including communists, were interned in concentration camps, the largest of which was Jasonovic. By the end of the war the Eustace, under Pavelic's leadership, had exterminated an estimated 30,000 Jews, 29,000 Gypsies, and between 300,000 and 600,000 Serbs. The history textbooks in the Socialist Federal Republic of Yugoslavia cited 700,000 as the total number of victims at Jasonovic. This was promulgated from a 1946 calculation of the demographic loss of population the difference between the actual number of people after the war and the number that would have been, had the pre-war growth trend continued. After that, it was used by Edvard Kardel and Moza Pijade in the Yugoslav war reparations claim sent to Germany. The United States Holocaust Memorial Museum says, due to differing views and lack of documentation, estimates for the number of Serbian victims in Croatia range widely, from 25,000 to more than 1 million. The most reliable figures place the number of Serbs killed by the Eustace between 330,000 and 390,000. The Jasonovic Memorial Area maintains a list of 83,145 names of Jasonovic victims that was gathered by government officials in Belgrade in 1964, as well as names and biographical data for the victims identified in recent inquiries. As the gathering process was imperfect, they estimated that the list represented between 60% to 75% of the total victims, putting the number of killed in that complex at between roughly 80,000 to 100,000. The previous head of the memorial area Simo Bradar estimated at least 365,000 dead at Jasonovic. The analyses of statisticians Vladimir Zerzhevich and Bogoljub Kochevich were similar to those of the memorial area. In all of Yugoslavia, the estimated number of Serb deaths was 487,000 according to Kochevich, and 530,000 according to Zerzhevich, out of a total of 1,014,000 or 1,027,000 deaths, respectively. Zerzhevich further stated there were 197,000 Serb civilians killed in NDH, 78,000 as prisoners in Jasonovic and elsewhere, as well as 125,000 Serb combatants. The Belgrade Museum of Holocaust compiled a list of over 77,000 names of Jasonovic victims. It was previously headed by Milan Balagic, who supported the claim of a total of 700,000 victims. The current administration of the museum has further expanded the list to include a bit over 80,000 names. During World War II various German military commanders and civilian authorities gave different figures for the number of Serbs, Jews and others killed inside the territory of the independent state of Croatia. Historian Prof. Jozo Tomasevic has posited that some of these figures may have been a deliberate exaggeration, fostered to create further hostility between Serbs and Croats so that they would not unite in resisting the Axis. These figures included 400,000 Serbs Alexander Lohr, 500,000 Serbs Lothar Rendelik, 250,000 to March 1943 Edmund Glez von Horstenau, more than three quarters of a million Serbs. Hermann Neubacher in 1943, 600,000 to 700,000 in concentration camps until March 1944 Ernst Fick, 700,000 Massenbach, of some 39,000 Jews who had lived in territory which became the independent state of Croatia, at least 30,000 died. <laughs> concentration camps The first group of camps was formed in the spring of 1941. These included Danica near Kaprivnica, Pag, Jadovno near Gospik, Krušica near Vitez and Travnik in Bosnia, Dakovo, Loborgrad in Zagoria, 
Tenja near Osiek. These camps were closed by October 1942. The Jasonovic complex was built between August 1941 and February 1942. The first two camps, Krapie and Broshitsa, were closed in November 1941. The three newer camps continued to function until the end of the war. Siglana Jasonovic III Kazara Jasonovic IV Stara Gradiska Jasonovic V There were also other camps in Gospic Jastrebersko between Zagreb and Karlovac Jastrebersko Children's Concentration Camp Karestinik Prison near Zagreb Lepoglava near Varaz the numbers of prisoners between 300,000 to 350,000 up to 700,000 in Jasonovic disputed around 35,000 in Gospic around 8,500 in Pag around 3,000 in Dakovo 1,018 in Jastrebersko around 1,000 in Lepoglava topic connections with the Catholic Church The Eustace policies against Eastern Orthodoxy are incorrectly associated with uniatism in some Eastern Orthodox circles. This term has not been used by the Roman Catholic Church except for Vatican condemnation of the idea in 1990. The Eustace represented an extreme example of uniatism, which was based on nationalism rather than on religion. They supported violent aggression or force to convert Serbo Croatian speaking Orthodox believers to Roman Catholicism. The Eustace held the position that Eastern Orthodoxy, as a symbol of Serbian nationalism, was their greatest foe and never recognized the existence of a Serb people on the territories of Croatia or Bosnia, they recognized only Croats of the Eastern faith. They called Bosniaks Croats of the Islamic faith, but tolerated Muslims and in fact received some support from Bosniak Muslims during World War II in the form of the Hanscher Division. On April 28, 1941, the head of the Catholic Church in Croatia, Archbishop Alojzij Stepanak, issued a public letter in support for the new Eustace state, and asked the clergy to pray for its leader, Ante Pavelic. This despite the fact that the Eustace had already proclaimed a series of anti-Serb and anti-Jewish measures, and he knew they were preparing Nazi-style racial laws, which Pavelic signed only two days after. While Stepanak later objected to certain Eustace policies, and helped some Jews and Serbs, he continued to publicly support he Eustace state until its very end, served as the state's war vicar, and in 1944 received a medal from Pavelic for more on Stepanak's wartime activities, see Alojzij Stepanak, World War II. The vast majority of the Catholic clergy in Croatia supported the Eustace. Some priests, mostly Franciscans, particularly in, but not limited to, Herzegovina and Bosnia, took part in the atrocities themselves. Priests like Ivan Gubarina served as Pavelic's bodyguards, while Dionysij Jurasev, responsible for the forced conversion of Serbs in the Eustace government, wrote that it was no longer a crime to kill seven-year-olds if they stood in the way of the Eustace movement. In his diocesan newspaper, the Archbishop of Sarajevo, Ivan Sarek, published that the liberation of the world from the Jews is a movement for the renewal of humanity. In Bosnia the Eustace largely ruled through the Catholic clergy, with the priest Bositor Bralo serving as a chief Eustace delegate for Bosnia. Miroslav Filipovic was a Franciscan friar from the Petrisvak Monastery who allegedly joined the Eustace as chaplain and, on 7 February 1942, joined in the massacre of roughly 2,730 Serbs of the nearby villages, including some 500 children. He was allegedly subsequently dismissed from his order and defrocked, although he wore his clerical garb when he was hanged for war crimes. He became chief guard of Jasonovic concentration camp where he was nicknamed Fra Sotona Father Satan, by fellow Croats. Miladin Lorkovic, the Croat Minister of Foreign Affairs, formulated it like this. In Croatia, we can find few real Serbs. The majority of Pravoslavs are as a matter of fact Croats who were forced by foreign invaders to accept the infidel faith. Now it's our duty to bring them back into the Roman Catholic fold." For the duration of the war, the Vatican kept up full diplomatic relations with the Eustace state granting Pavelic an audience, with its papal nuncio in Zagreb, the Croatian capital city. The nuncio was briefed on the efforts of religious conversions to Roman Catholicism. After World War II ended, the Eustace who had managed to escape from Yugoslav territory including Pavelic were smuggled to South America. 
This was largely done through rat lines operated by Catholic priests who had previously secured positions at the Vatican. Some of the more infamous members of the Illyrian College of San Girolamo in Rome involved in this were Franciscan friars Krunislav Draganovich and Dominic Mandic, and a third friar surnamed Petronovich first name unknown. .The Eustace regime had deposited large amounts of gold plundered from Serbs and Jews during World War II into Swiss bank accounts. Out of a total of 350 million Swiss francs, an estimated 150 million was seized by British troops, however, the remaining 200 million, ca. $47 million reached the Vatican. In October 1946 the American intelligence agency SSU alleged that these funds were still held in the Vatican Bank. This issue was the theme of a class action suit against the Vatican Bank and others see Alperin v. Vatican Bank. Cardinal Aloysij Stepanak, Archbishop of Zagreb during World War II, was accused of supporting the Eustace and of exonerating those in the clergy who collaborated with them and were hence complicit in forced conversions. Stepanak stated on 28 March 1941, noting early attempts to unite Croatians and Serbs, "...all in all, Croats and Serbs are of two worlds, North Pole and South Pole, never will they be able to get together unless by a miracle of God." The schism between the Catholic Church and Eastern Orthodoxy is the greatest curse in Europe, almost greater than Protestantism. Here there is no moral, no principles, no truth, no justice, no honesty." In 1998 Stepanak was beatified by Pope John Paul II. On the 22nd of June 2003 John Paul II visited Banja Luka. During the visit he held a mass at the aforementioned Petrisvak Monastery. This caused public uproar due to the connection of the monastery with Filipovic. At the same location the Pope proclaimed the beatification of a Roman Catholic layman Ivan Mers who was the founder of the «Association of Croatian Eagles» in 1923, which some view as a precursor to the Eustace. Roman Catholic apologists defend the Pope's actions by stating the convent at Petrisvac was one of the places that went up in flames, causing the death of 80-year-old friar Aloysij Atlia. Further, it was claimed by the apologists that the war had produced a total exodus of the Catholic population from this region, that the few who remained were predominantly elderly, and that the church in Bosnia then allegedly risked total extinction due to the war. Structure At the top of the command was the Poglavnik meaning head, Ante Pavelic. Pavelic was appointed the office as head of state of Croatia after Adolf Hitler had accepted Benito Mussolini's proposal of Pavelic, on 10 April 1941. The Croatian Home Guard was the armed forces of Croatia, it subsequently merged into the Croatian Armed Forces. Symbols The symbol of the Eustace was a capital blue letter, U, with an exploding grenade emblem within it. The flag of the independent state of Croatia was a red white blue horizontal tricolor with the shield of the coat of arms or Croatia in the middle and the U in the upper left. Its currency was the NDH kuna. The Eustace greeting was, Za dom, spremni. Salute, Za dom. For home, land. Reply, Spremni, we are ready. This was used instead of the Nazi greeting Heil Hitler by the Eustace. Today it is nominally associated with Eustace sympathizers by Serbs or non Eustace conservatives associated with the Croatian Party of Rights. However, some Croats see it as a patriotic salute, emphasizing defending one's home and country. On the Internet, it is sometimes abbreviated as ZDS. Legacy Use by Serbian nationalists Since the end of World War II, Serbian historians have used the Eustace to promote that Serbs resisted the Axis, while Croats and Bosniaks widely supported them. However, the Eustace never received massive support. In the 1980s, Serbian historians produced many works about the forced conversion during World War II of Serbs to Catholicism in Eustace Croatia. 
These debates between historians openly became nationalistic and also entered the wider media. Historians in Belgrade during the 1980s who had close government connections often went on television during the evenings to discuss invented or real details about the Ustashi genocide against Serbs during World War II. Serb clergy and nationalists blamed all Croats for crimes committed by the Ustashi, and for planning a genocide against Serb people. These propagandistic activities were aimed at justifying planned crimes and ethno-demographic engineering in Croatia. Modern usage of the term Ustashi After World War II, the Ustashi movement was split into several organizations, and there is presently no political or paramilitary movement that claims its legacy as their successor. The term Ustase is today used as a derogatory term for Croatian ultranationalism. The term Ustashi is sometimes used among Serbs to describe Serbophobia or more generally to defame political opponents. When Slobodan Milosevic's rule was approaching its end, some protesters called him an Ustashi. In popular culture The Ustashi plays an important role in Harry Turtledove's short alternate history story, Ready for the Fatherland. It plays a brief background role in In the Presence of Mine Enemies, an unrelated work by the same author. In both these works, the regime founded by Pavelic lasted several decades beyond the 1940s. See also Independent State of Croatia World War II in Yugoslavia